Welcome to today's video. Today, I'm gonna show you guys how I created this makeup look. And follow along with me because I wanted to show you guys um, each of the BK Beauty brushes in action. I wanted to show you guys how I use them, um, tips and tricks for using them, all that good stuff. And I started this tutorial out with already foundation on and concealer on because I had run errands this morning. And then when I got to the very end, I realized that there were two brushes that I didn't get to show in action, the foundation brush and the bronzer brush. So I decided at the end to remove my foundation and show you those two brushes. So stick along with me and that way you can see all nine brushes in action. Um, today we did launch pre-orders for the three options for sets. So today you can pre-order your set. You can either do the full set, the eye set, or the face set. That starts today and it runs through August 10th when we will be opening the uh, website for all orders so you can buy individual brushes. So I'm super excited about today. This is a big, big day. I'm saying today. I'm actually filming this a week ahead of time. I feel like I'm not being truthful by saying that. But by the time this video goes up, today is actually today. I'm talking about the future. All right, you guys, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, you guys. So uh, let me show you guys the brushes. I have them here in front of me. Actually, let me put them in a, let me put them in this cup. I have them in this tray, but this cup is a little better. So here is what the brushes look like. I am so excited to share these with you guys. I mean, do you see how like luxe and glossy these handles are? This, I cannot tell you how excited I was when I got these back from these for the first samples back from the factory, which I guess would have been in February or so. And I got to see for the first time these brushes that I had been like designing for months. I got to actually see it in person. I squealed like a kid on Christmas. So this is what the brushes look like. They're super high gloss, this deep burgundy shade. You can see how it picks up a lot of red. There's obviously a lot of red. I didn't want it to be too bright red, but I didn't want it to be too dark either. And then it has a light gold ferrule and light gold stamping. The brushes are numbered. We have a 100 and 200 series. 100 is all for the face. 200 are for the eyes. Um, yeah, and we'll kind of stick with that theme as we uh, launch other brushes in the future, which we are already working on. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. I don't want this whole video to be like a BK Beauty brush video, but I did want to use them so you guys could actually see how they perform. So I do have my foundation on and bronzer concealer. I'm going to start with a little bit of eye primer. I had to take Max to the vet this morning. Um, he's fine. He just, he has like chronic ear infections. We've been dealing with this for years. Um, and it got to a point where it was like literally every month he was in the vet for ear infections. And we've gotten to a point where we've been, we've been able to manage it. Um, but anyway, he had one that just flared up again. And so I had to go take him and get him on the medication. So, okay, so I'm just gonna apply that with my finger. That's the Milani eye primer that I use in almost every video. I need to mix it up and get, go get another primer. <laughs> All right, so next we're gonna start with just kind of um, setting the eyelid. And I'm gonna grab the 201 brush. This is the um, blending crease, blended crease brush. I really like this brush because it applies a very nice kind of sheer wash of color. The fibers are really long and soft and the tip is very, very rounded. Um, and I'm gonna dig into this shade here. It's called Milk and Cookies and it's by Sydney Grace. It's just a really nice, I feel like this is a great all over color, but especially great for the highlight of the brow because it is nice and bright. It doesn't have uh, too much shimmer to it. Actually, it doesn't have really any shimmer, but I like it because I like her, her mattes because they don't look like dusty. They just have the slightest, slightest little sheen to them that they just look really nice on the skin. And this one does as well. It's really pretty. So I'm just gonna kind of dust this all over um, really start underneath the brow the first place that you put your brush, whether it's this brush or any brush you use, the first place you put your brush is where you're going to deposit the most color. So I always start where I want the most color and then I kind of blend out. Now I did want the handles on these to be um, on the longer side and the reason I wanted that is because I wanted you to be able to like pull your hand further back if you want. I've talked about this in other videos that you can really get a nice lighter blend the further that you hold your brush back and if you want more control obviously you can um, hold Hold your brush a little closer to the ferrule. I like to have mine when I'm using my crease or like trying to get a soft wash of color, I like to hold it further back. I really want to have like the, the movement in my hand to shear a product out. If I'm too close to it, I don't really have that same movement and it's gonna be harder to get a softer blend. Okay, next I'm gonna go in the crease with this shade by Sydney Grace. It is called Laughter and it is a matte shade and it is pretty much like a pinky neutral shade. Um, it actually looks a lot lighter on camera than it does. The lights are so bright. I just adjusted my lighting situation and I, I, I don't really, 
it's still a work in progress. I need to adjust it because it's too bright. Um, but anyway, this color is really pretty. It kind of reminds me of that color Hoax by Max. Mac, if you remember that shade, I don't know if they still carry it or not, but I'm gonna apply this right here in my crease. And this color is, it's deep enough to really give some definition, but it's light enough to where you really can use a brush like this, which, which is bigger and fluffier and get like a nice veil of color. If this were a very, a, a darker color, I wouldn't use this brush because this brush picks up product. And it's just got a lot of like space. So it's gonna really apply like that. It's really great for shades that are on the lighter to mid-tone. Uh, shades that are really dark, I mean, you certainly can use this if you want, but it's just gonna be harder to control exactly where you place it. This is a blending tool, um, but if you're looking for precision, which we typically are when we're working with darker shades, I would recommend another brush that I'll show you guys in a little bit, um, or just something a little smaller. So I'm just gonna work this back and forth into the crease, going in little circles. So next I'm gonna build my outer V a little bit more. So I'm gonna go in with a brush that has more of a defined tip. It's more tapered. There's more control over your product placement. And that's the 202 brush. So you can see these are our two crease brushes and you can see that they're pretty different in shape. Uh, this one obviously has more of a tapered tip. So you're really gonna be able to get right there in that outer corner and concentrate the color application uh, more specifically. Then I'm gonna hop over to the Charlotte Tilbury palette that was part of the Nordstrom anniversary sale. I love this palette. This was in my favorites video. Video. and I'm gonna take the darkest shade and I'm just gonna take it on the tip of this brush so you can see I'm really just kind of picking the product up on the tip and then I'm going to start in the um, outer part of my crease and just softly kind of go back and forth. I'm not really going in circles. I'm just going back and forth. This brush is nice because it's a fine tip, but the bristles that are tapered outward are really soft. So the color is naturally gonna blend out um, and kind of like diffuse just above that crease. You don't really have to do a lot of work. You don't have to work it in circles. The brush kind of does the work for you. Then I'm gonna take that tip and I'm gonna pull it down and connect to my lash line right here. Okay. Now, I'm gonna actually go back, and I'm gonna go in with the 201 brush, and I'm going to shear this out a little bit, go back and forth. This is just, uh, you can use these two brushes together. I like to do that a lot too, uh, just to kind of shear out and blend out a crease if you, if you want it to be a little softer, which I would do. Okay, so this is where we are at now. Now I'm gonna go and build my lid color, and this color by Sydney Grace, you guys, is stunning. It's called Morning Star, and it's like this yellow golden shade that's, what a formula is this? It's a pressed pigment, okay? So it's got a lot of pigment to it, and you can see that it's highly reflective. It really reminds me of like a foiled eyeshadow. And you can certainly use your finger, but I wanna show you guys um, the 203 brush, which pretty much mimics a finger if you ask me. You can see the size and shape of it. I really wanted the lid brush to be a lid brush that would work on all eye shapes, not just people that had a lot of lid space or very large. I wanted someone with a smaller or hooded eye to really be able to utilize this brush. So I I wanted to make it a good size to where it gave enough coverage but it wasn't too big. Um, and then I created it so the tip is very, very tapered and fluffy. So even though it's gonna pack on color on the lid, that tip is gonna kinda help soften the edges a bit. So I'm gonna go into this product and I'm gonna use the side of the brush and just pick it up. I'm not using the tip, I'm using the side, picking it up. And then I'm going to kind of just dust off any excess uh, product that I might have so I don't have fallout. And I'm gonna go and I'm just gonna press this onto the eye. Now for this part, I do like to hold my brush a little closer to the ferrule because I have more control and I can kind of just get a nice precise application and really press it into the skin, stamp it into the skin, get a good color payoff. So I'm just gonna do that. I also created it so that it has a nice kind of curved tip. If you can tell, it's very slightly. It's not like, basically it's not super straight, right? I wanted to have a slight curve so that when you get into the inner corner of the eye, it worked really well. So that's what I did here. So you can just kind of turn the brush that way. That way you get into the inner corner and those soft that soft tip is gonna soften that edge right there. Perfect. I'm gonna zoom you guys in a little bit closer so you can see the shadow a bit better. Then I'm gonna go back in with the 202 brush and I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of that first crease color, uh, the laughter. And I'm just going to give a little bit more definition with that. Here we go, that's what I want. And I'm gonna kind of pull it over here. I'm even gonna kind of pull it over here and almost blend it up into the brow. I really like that look. The key when you're doing that look where you're blending your crease color into your brow, or kind of here to where the bridge of the nose starts, is make sure you use a brush that's really soft. If you have a brush that's too stiff, it's going to not look soft. You really want it to look soft and smoky. So you wanna make sure that your brush is soft enough to achieve that. 
So I'm going to dip into this Camera Ready Cosmetics um, palette. It's a collab with Viseart, so it's exclusive to Cam Camera Ready Cosmetics. And I'm going to dip into this purpley shade right here. I haven't used this yet from the palette. This quality, if you haven't used Viseart shadows before, they are like some of the best. And I have a couple of palettes, smaller palettes from Viseart. Um, and I have a large matte palette, but I, I don't own a ton from there and I kind of forgot how good they were. Okay, so next what I'm gonna do, I'm trying to think what brush I wanna go in and do this with. Um, you know what, we're gonna use the 202 again. Um, I'm gonna test it because normally this, this color is so dark that normally I would go with a brush pretty small, but I'm just gonna use the tip of this brush. I'm gonna grab a little bit and I'm going to just apply that right there on the outer part and just softly press and then kind of wiggle the brush a little bit to blend it. And I'm not even gonna re-dip it in the palette. I'm just gonna use what's on here to do the other side because these shadows have so much pigment to them and I really don't need a lot because I want it to be just concentrating the outer corner. If I get too much, then I'm gonna have a big mess. That is so pretty. That just adds like a little extra oomph to the look, so pretty. So the next I'm gonna take that same shade. Now I'm gonna use the 204 brush. This brush is our smudge it brush and you can see it is very very tiny it has very short dense stiff fibers but there is still a, quite a bit of softness right here on the tip so it really helps you achieve that like smoky lined look um, now I'm gonna go straight into this eyeshadow I'm not even gonna put a liner down first which normally I do I find that I can really get a great look without a liner using this brush I am gonna tap it off though because I don't want a lot of excess to fall on my foundation and I'm just gonna run it right underneath my lower lashes back and forth. Because this brush is so dense, it is going to pick up a lot of product. Um, a lot of, so you're gonna get a really intense pigment payoff. So even if you use a shade that's lighter, it's going to translate darker using this brush. Okay, so I'm gonna stop right there. I don't wanna take it all the way to the inner corner. That's even a little, I think once I have my upper liner and my lashes on, it's all gonna tie together. So next I'm gonna grab the 202 brush and I'm just gonna use the tip. I kind of wiped off what was on it on a paper towel or your hand or anything you have laying around. And I'm, I'm just gonna run it across real quickly just to really, really smoke out and diffuse that line. Okay. So next I'm gonna go and apply my upper lid liner and I'm gonna use my Kat Von D Tattoo Ink Liner. I think I need a new one. This one is starting to get a little dry, but hopefully I have enough to get through this makeup application. I'm gonna keep the line real thin and then I'm going to slightly pull it out here and wing it out on the end. I really just wanna give the lash band that I'm gonna use um, something to uh, kind of be concealed with. I don't really want a, a really heavy lined look on the upper lid. I just want my lashes to blend. Okay, so next I'm gonna apply my lashes and I will be right back. Okay, we are back. Lashes make such a difference, don't they? I still always feel the need to put a little mascara after I've put lashes on, um, just to kind of blend my natural lashes in and then of course my lower lashes. You just wanna make sure that your glue has completely dried because if you go in and put mascara and the lash is not you know, dry, then you might risk pulling it off. So I just go in and I run a little mascara right there on my natural lashes. That's also gonna help um, kind of push and and shape the lashes up. If you apply them in a weird way to where one maybe was pointing down, the other one's not. Um, you can do this and it's gonna help kind of lift them and, and give them a, a nice consistent shape. And then I'm gonna apply a little on my lower lashes. I get so many compliments on these earrings. I just realized I was wearing them in this video. Um, they are part of Kendra Scott's new uh, fall collection. I can't believe we're talking about fall already. <laughs> um, but I love them. Every time I wear them, I get so many uh, compliments and I thought they looked pretty with this top because this top's like a pinky kind of lavender shade and then you can see that this picks up uh, some of those same tones so pretty so I'm just going to kind of touch up my powder so um, I'm going to go in with the long home long time no shine I think is the name of this powder yes I love it it's one of my favorites and I'm going to apply it with um, our big loose powder brush this is the 102 brush just to show you the size of it it's nice and big and fluffy the fibers are really long and soft and I'm just going to go in here and pick up the product really work it into the brush and because I already applied powder I'm really just going to use a very light hand and powder the center of the face. Not much. It's so weird, I didn't apply any products to give a glow, but you can see I kind of have this little glow going on. I wonder what it is, what foundation? I had on the Chanel um, Perfection Lumiere Velvet Foundation, 
and I used the Supergoop Unseen Sunscreen as a primer, um, but I didn't use anything that has an intentional glow, so I'm kind of curious as why that's popping through. I'm not complaining. Okay, so next I'm gonna go in with our 104 uh, Tapered Powder uh, Brush. I use this for blush. I didn't wanna call it blush brush because I feel like it has so many other uses you can use it for. You can use it, I think, to set underneath your eyes. Even though it's a larger brush, it has a nice real tapered kind of uh, point here, so it really does get under the eyes nicely. You can also use it to highlight cheekbones, I feel like. It's big enough to where you can use it for blush or even as a full powder brush, but it has a nice tapered tip to where you can utilize just that tip and do more detailed work on the face. I'm gonna use it for blush, and I'm gonna go into this uh, Flower Pots Powder Blush in the shade Sweet Pea. This is probably one of my favorite finds this month. This is such a beautiful shade, you guys. It is like the most beautiful, like cool tone pink. And it's a matte formula, but it's it's not, um, like dry or, or dusty or it just has a really pretty creamy matte look to it. And so I'm just gonna use the tip of the brush and pick up the product and I'm gonna smile <laughs> and I'm gonna pop it right there on the apples of my cheek and blend down. This makeup is fun. It's a little more than I normally wear, but I'm kind of digging it. I really love purples. When I wear purples, I just love it. I don't know why I don't wear them more often. I always just go towards neutrals and browns, but every time I wear purple, I feel pretty. I feel like I, I really like my makeup that day. Okay, for lips, I'm gonna go in with the Charlotte Tilbury Hot Lips 2 collection. This is uh, my favorite shade from the collection. It's called Dance Floor Princess, and it is like just a really nice kind of soft nude pink. I'm not gonna apply any liner. I'm just gonna apply this on my lips. It's just such a natural nude pink is what it is. I mean, it really, like look, I didn't apply any on my upper lip. I only applied it on my lower and you can see that it's pretty much the shade of my lip color, just enhanced a little bit. Obviously, all of us have different lip colors, right? But for me, this is just like the perfect nude color. I mean, you can see it looks just like my natural lip color. So why put it on, some people are gonna ask. Well, it's gonna enhance a little, a little bit. It's also gonna give a fullness to the lips. Uh, without anything on my lips, my lips have a lot of lines and texture to them. They look really small. I'm also going to kinda use the tip of this lipstick. It's got a nice pointed tip, and I'm gonna kind of almost line the lips with it. Because it is such a natural color on me, it's okay if it kind of spreads. It really is okay if it spreads. It just gives the lips a fuller, softer look. I love this color, it's so nice. I'm kind of thinking if I should top it with a gloss or leave it. I'm gonna top it just because I wanna show you this gloss because I raved about this in my favorites video for July and it is so fantastic. It's the Persona Lip Gloss in the shade Peach. This formula is beautiful. It is so beautiful. It feels so great on the lips. It The texture is really nice. It's not thick or sticky, high, high shine. It smells just like you wanna eat it. It smells so good. I love this, love this formula. I need to get more shades in it. They sent me a couple others, uh, a couple other nude shades, but I saw it came in a pink. I'm gonna get online and do that today. Oh my gosh, so, so pretty. Oh, I love this combination. All right, and there you guys have it. I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial. I really like the way the makeup came out. I think it's really, really nice and pretty. Um, so we talked through most of the brushes. I'm just kind of sitting here wondering and realizing that there were two brushes I didn't get to share with you guys. And I'm almost thinking I should probably remove my foundation and just show you guys the foundation brush in action because I didn't get to show you that. And that's such an important brush. So I think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna remove the foundation. We'll leave the eyes and the lips. And I'm gonna show you guys the foundation brush and the bronzer brush in action. Um, so yeah, let's do that. Okay. So here we are, took off my foundation and just moisturized my skin. I really wanna show you guys this foundation brush in action because it's very different, I think, than a lot of foundation brush that you guys have seen. This is what it looks like. I called it the, I called it the contour foundation brush just because it has like this clearly obvious defined kind of contour tip to it. Uh, so I wanna show you guys how I like to use this brush. Um, all right, what foundation are we gonna use? I think we're gonna go into, let's just stick with the Chanel um, Perfection Lumiere Velvet Foundation. <laughs> going to kind of shake this up. Now I have heard this foundation is on its way out or they're reformulating it. Someone sent me a message and said she heard that they're reformulating it without the SPF, which I don't know why they would do that. Like why would you take away the SPF? So I like, depending on the foundation that you're using, um, either applying on the back of my hand and using the brush or applying it on the face and shearing it out, uh, this foundation is, or this brush is gonna give more of a natural kind of coverage and foundation. You can certainly build a foundation
foundation for more coverage with it. But the way that these fibers are, how they're long and really soft at the tip, when you use that tip, it's really going to kind of blend and kind of shear out your foundation. Um, you can get more coverage by using the more dense part here, but I find that it gives a very, very natural finish to your foundation. If you use a very natural foundation, like very natural coverage, very sheer, you might even wanna kind of apply it on the skin first and just go in here and press it like so. If you use a heavier, fuller coverage, thicker consistency, then you can certainly kind of go directly from your brush, grab it from your hand and um, kind of blend it out. Uh, this is a very lightweight foundation, so I'm going to just take a little bit on the tip of the brush like that, and I'm just going to go, and I'm just going to start and press it in the center of the face. Now, this foundation is very thin and very lightweight. It almost has like kind of like a watery consistency to it, so I'm going to probably need to build this up a little bit. Because it is so light and sheer, I don't want to go like this because I don't want to shear it out anymore. I want to get the most coverage that I can. So if you notice, I'm just using this brush and pressing it on. Now, when I get down here to the perimeter of the face, then I will kind of drag it down to blend it out and hold my earring back so I don't like whack that around. <laughs> so you can see that I'm just using the tip of this brush to really shear and blend out that product so I don't have any harsh lines. Now, I like this brush because you can use it so many different ways. Um, you can kind of really work it in circles so it almost works like a blended or like a rounded kabuki brush. You can kind of pull it down so it almost mimics like a one of the old school foundation brushes that looks like a paintbrush, which I'm honestly really not a fan of those. I've talked about that before. Um, or you can just kind of press it so it has like that same effect of a kabuki brush. It's very, very versatile. It's all in how you use it and the motion that you create with it. Now, these hairs are, are longer, the tip are longer, so when you start to notice them kind of flattening out it's time to wash your brush and reshape it so when you wash it just you know wash it like you're any other normal brushes put your soap in your hand or whatever you use if you use a solid balm wash it squeeze the water out and reshape it and then lay it down and I like to lay it kind of flat on um, its back like this so when you notice that the tips are kind of flattening out that's when it's time to shape to wash and reshape so soft you guys so soft Okay, now I do need to grab a little bit more foundation than this. So if you find that you're going through more foundation than you normally do, like if you find that the brush is going through too much, then you might want to apply it directly to the skin and then blend it out. I really feel like this brush kind of blends the effect that I get from a kabuki brush and a beauty blender. It kind of com combines that finish and achieves that. Like I always say that a beauty blender um, kind of shears out foundation and I use it for fuller coverage foundations because it gives a more natural look. Uh, but I wouldn't use a beauty blender on a foundation that's really thin and natural because it's just going to soak up all your product and you're going to get you're not going to get good coverage. I feel like this brush is a really a great blend between a kabuki foundation brush and a beauty blender. It's going to give you a natural finish, um, but you can still get you get more coverage than you do from a beauty blender. I mean, once you've kind of gotten the coverage and blended it, then you can kind of just run it across the face and just that extra added little step. It's so nice. Okay. Now, I probably don't even need to use this much anymore, but I do want to get, and I just kind of, I like to do this little motion, like, and I like this like eight shape across my face. All right. There we are done, friends. I think I need to touch up my concealer too. So for that, I'm going to go in and I'm going to grab, what are we going to grab? Let's grab the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Away Concealer. And we will put a little bit underneath the eye, just like that. I have the shade... Uh, four. So this is a good brightening one. And then I'm going to take, let's take this foundation brush actually, and just use the tip. And so I'm just using the tip and pressing and that's going to blend out that concealer really well. So this brush will work well with uh, like a lighter weight natural concealer like that. I haven't really used it too much with he more heavier weight concealers. I like to use a beauty blender for that because that's like the best product I feel like to really just make heavy concealer look more natural. Um, but if you're using more of a natural lighter weight concealer, this brush works really well. All right, so next, I already showed you guys the big powder, so I'm gonna go in with the 103 brush. Um, this brush I'm calling kind of like our bronzer brush, but you can really use it for powder, for blush, um, really for anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and use it for powder since I need to set my powder anyway. And I'm just gonna dip it in here and then just kind of dust it all over the face. Light, light set of powder. For bronzer, why don't we just go ahead and use this Marc Jacobs that I'm holding. Um, I'm gonna, so I like to use the tip of it. It's very fluffy, you can see. Uh, so I'm really gonna just dig in that product. You can see that it's crimped here, so it kind of creates this nice flat head. Um, 
And then I'm just gonna really hold it at the tip of the um, handle and just run it down to kind of create that contour. It also will give a really nice soft contour. So if you like a real natural contour, this brush is really great for that. I'm like, where's the product that's in my hand? All right, and I'm even gonna kind of run it down the sides of my nose. Because this bronzer is really natural, I can do that and I'm not too worried about it looking too dark. Okay. All right, let's just go touch up my blush because I obviously need to do that. So I'm gonna uh, grab the tapered powder brush and pop it on my cheeks. There we go, now I feel better. Now you got to see all the brushes in action. After I got done with that first application, I thought, ah, oh, I didn't even show them the foundation brush and I feel like that's probably like what you guys wanna see, you know? Especially because it's so different. It's such a different shape that I wanted to show you guys how I like to use it. And we are done. So that is all of the nine piece BK Beauty brushes in action. Uh, leave me all your questions and comments down below. We did just launch pre-orders today for the set. So you can pre-order a set, like you can order just the eye set or the face set or the full set. And we will be opening the site for all orders by August 10th. So then you can order individual brushes as well. So super excited about this, you guys. I hope this answered a lot of your questions. I hope you got to really learn from something from seeing the brushes in action. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know what you think down below. As always, thank you guys so much for your support. This day is a huge day for me and I really could not do any of this without you. Um, and I have said it over and over again, I feel like the last couple weeks, but I will continue to say it forever. Um, and I will never, ever, ever forget that. I will never forget that. If I didn't have you guys watching my videos and supporting me, I wouldn't be able to do any of this. So thank you so much. As always, I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.